After a tubal reversal, it's hard to stay so excited about a pregnancy when you know the possibilities of all of the negative things that could happen. There's ectopic pregnancy, um, early miscarriage. There's a lot that could go wrong, and our biggest concern was an ectopic pregnancy. So I think it was the next day I started to get cramps. Immediately, I was like, oh no, you know, this is not a good sign. Like, this could be ectopic because that... Dr. Moore follows you after your tuber reversal for the first trimester when you get pregnant. He had told us, he said, you know, if you conceive and you end up having cramps, then you need to make sure that you're checked by your doctor or go to the emergency room because there is a high possibility that you could have a ectopic pregnancy, which is a pregnancy that is not in the uterus. It is in the fallopian tubes. Um, there is no salvaging a pregnancy if it's ectopic. They can't, they can't take the baby from the tube and put it in the uterus. It's not, it, if it's in the tube, it is not a viable pregnancy. It will not go to term. When I started getting cramps, I started getting really, you know, concerned about it. And, um, I called Daniel and I told him, listen, I'm getting cramps. I'm going to go to the emergency room. So, and he was still at work. So I went to the emergency room and I walked in and I think I shot myself in the foot. I don't think I should have told them that I was cramping per se. I think I should have just told them, listen, I found out I was pregnant and I had my tubes untied, so I want to make sure that everything's okay. The moment that I told them that I was cramping, it was automatically ectopic. And uh, they did the urine test and the urine test came back positive. And so at that point, what they did was they had drawn my blood. They wanted to check my HCG levels to make sure that they were what they were supposed to be for where we thought I was at. And I think at that point I was roughly three weeks pregnant, so it wasn't very far along. They basically sent me home with this packet of things to look out for, fever and all this other crap, um, verified that I was pregnant and then took my blood samples and wanted me to follow up with the doctor the next day. They referred me to my current doctor um, and I went in to see him and immediately he was like, okay, well, we got your HCG levels from the emergency room and I think at this point they were 300 and, and something. So in my mind, I thought that was good. I was like, oh, this is, you know, we're good. Well, he's like, I, I really need to draw some more blood. So he drew some more blood. You need to go back to this clinic at the hospital so that they can redraw your blood in 48 hours, which would be the next day. And I was like, okay. <laughs> this whole time I'm thinking to myself, no one's told me whether or not this is a viable pregnancy. And here I am thinking it's ectopic. And when your mind goes there, it's like, you can't, you can't be happy. You just, you're, you're crying. You know, you're upset. You're just like, someone please tell me what the heck's going on because I don't know what's going on. Right? So the next day I go into the clinic and I have my numbers drawn. Daniel and I decided we are going to wait to get our numbers. So we literally waited, I think for like four hours and she finally gave us our results back. And at this point they were 900 and something. I want to say like 967 or something like that. So my, they had m doubled, more than doubled. So I was like, this is good news, right? This is, this is really good news. Basically at this point, um, I had called Dr. Moore who did our surgery, orig surgery originally, and he wanted to know the numbers. So I told him, listen, you know, they were 300 and something 48 hours ago. Now they're 900 and something. And he said, this is actually a really good sign. He said, the fact that they're doubling the way that they're supposed to is less chance that it's going to be an ectopic pregnancy. So at this point, I had a doctor's appointment scheduled for three weeks later, which would have been my six week mark. And I'm still in that safe zone per se, as far as ectopic pregnancy goes. It's why they didn't have my appointment like the next day. We had gone to our six week appointment with um, our doctor and we had given them the results. They already had the results, but we had the ones that we had. And he said, you know what? This looks good. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do an ultrasound. I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to explain to you the, remember those reasons I said that we did not post any videos for a long time? Throughout these videos, you are going to understand what those reasons are. And literally, this entire pregnancy has been everything bad that could happen in a pregnancy 
according to my doctor, was happening to me at that moment. For example, ectopic. It had to be ectopic pregnancy because, you know, I had my tubes untied. So we go in and he explains to us, okay, we're going to do an ultrasound to find out for sure whether it is ectopic in your tubes or if it's in your uterus. They get us into the ultrasound room and he's looking and he's looking and he's looking and he says, well, there's the gestational sac. He said, it is not in your fallopian tube it is in your uterus immediately i mean daniel and i looked at each other and we were just like thank god like we were so ecstatic that it wasn't an ectopic pregnancy then he proceeds to say i see the gestational sac i do not see a yolk sac i'm not going to guarantee you that this is a viable pregnancy however it looks to me like you have a blighted ovum a what so I went from thinking it was an ectopic pregnancy to a little bit of excitement because, you know, it's not an ectopic pregnancy, but now it's a blighted ovum. For those of you that don't know what a blighted ovum is, it is when the egg and the sperm meet, no conception happens, um, there is no baby, but there is a gestational sac. So it's like your body thinks you're pregnant, that, you know, the process happened. Um, but there's no baby inside the sack. It's just an empty sack. We leave this doctor's appointment thinking it's a freaking blighted ovum. Um, we had to get, before we left that doctor's appointment, we had to get another HCG draw, which if you have a blighted ovum, your body does everything that, that it would do if you were pregnant. So your HCG levels would be showing like normal and everything would be happening like normal. It's just, there's no baby in the sack. We did our blood test before we left and um, like I said, from the last blood draw to this one was three weeks. So we had to end up waiting another two weeks because he wanted to give it time. If there was a yolk sac, he wanted to give it time to grow. So we had to wait another two weeks for our next appointment. I gotta tell ya, one of the most difficult things about being pregnant is being able to enjoy the pregnancy without worrying. And this is on a normal basis. With my boys, which were 100% normal pregnancies, um, you worry constantly, am I eating the right things? Is my baby growing the right way? Is, you know, is everything okay? Blah, 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 blah. And now, here we are, we're pregnant after so long of wanting to be pregnant and so long of trying and, you know, it finally happens for us and then it's all this bad news. And so it's really hard to um, enjoy this experience together when you're being told by your doctor, do not enjoy this yet because we're not out of the woods. So anyways, eight week appointment comes up and we go in and we find out that my HCG le levels were at this point, I think he said up to, I want to say 22,000 something. My numbers were normal. They were what they were supposed to be for normal pregnancy. Okay, so we went in and I think at this point we had done an ultrasound and the ultrasound had shown gestational sac and then there was little peanut. There was little peanut. I mean, it looked like a booger on, and like, it was just so cute. That's <laughs> the only time I ever think a booger's cute is when it's a baby, okay? I think we could see the flicker of the heartbeat at this point. So, um, we could see flicker of heartbeat and he's like, listen, you know, this is really early on. I don't want you to get your hopes up. You are indeed pregnant. There is a baby in there. He said, but you, you are at a higher chance for a miscarriage because of your ectopic or your, um, tuber reversal. So we were just ecstatic that it was a viable pregnancy, that it was, you know, there was a baby and there was a little peanut. So we left extremely happy. I think one of the very few doctor's appointments we actually left happy at. We ended up going back, I want to say 10 weeks. Now at this point, what the doctor was going to do was check baby's heartbeat and I think do some measurements as far as uterus goes and yeah. That was about it. So it was just really a checkup appointment to make sure baby was still doing okay. So we go in to our 10 week appointment. And I think the reason they did it at 10 weeks is to put us back on track for a normal pregnancy um, doctor's appointments basically. We went in at 10 weeks. We walk in the doctor's office and the doctor brings out his Doppler and there's a nurse in the room and he's like, okay, we're gonna look for, you know, baby's heartbeat. So he puts the Doppler on my stomach and he's looking around and he's looking around and can't find the freaking heartbeat. At this point, um, Daniel's getting pissed because he feels like it's the doctor that's putting all these worries into my head, which yes, but at the same time, the doctor is being 
blunt. You know, he doesn't want us to be overly excited for something that could possibly turn out to be a bad thing. So he's preparing us for the worst and hoping for the best, basically. Daniel looks up at the doctor, and the doctor, I, t I think he was looking or trying to find the heartbeat in my stomach for every bit of, like, three minutes, maybe even five. Um, and finally, Daniel looks up at the doctor, and he said he saw the doctor look at the nurse and shake his head. And he didn't say anything to me, but he shook his head, and he puts the Doppler away, and he says, we're going to do an ultrasound. And I've heard baby's heartbeats before. I know what they sound like, and I know he wasn't finding it. So I instantly started panicking. I'm like almost in tears because he can't find the freaking heartbeat. At this point, we're going to be doing a transvaginal ultrasound. So I had to pee, so I immediately went to the bathroom. Um, I come back out, and I was crying in the bathroom. And I, you know, I came back into the room, and Daniel's just looking at me, and I'm looking at him. The doctor comes in, and he does the ultrasound, and he didn't even say anything. He turns the screen towards me and says there's the heartbeat. I started crying because it, you, you could see it. It's just normal as all could be. I mean, it was just puttering away. And, um, come to find out I have an anterior placenta, which means my placenta is on the front end of my stomach or on the front of my stomach, not the side. It's here. So it's between baby and my, my stomach. So it's like, it acts like a pillow. And we didn't know this up until this point. We didn't know this even at this point. But, um, so when he would go take the Doppler to try and check for the heartbeat, that placenta was in the way and he couldn't get the heartbeat on the Doppler. So that was an emotional roller coaster because here we are thinking, okay, now our baby has no heartbeat and then we see the heartbeat and then we're excited again. So that's what I mean by literally roller coaster. I mean, it was just up and down and up and down and up and down. And I could not, neither of us, Daniel or I could ever actually sit down and fully enjoy being pregnant and it was because everywhere we turned there was a negative there was a negative there was a negative and this whole time we're holding on to God and we're saying you know what father you gave us this child you are going to deliver this child through all of this you are going to be the one that keeps this child now we reach our 12 to 14 week checkup which I can't remember if it was 12 or 14, so I'm going to say 12 to 14 week checkup because I can't remember. Um, and this was the appointment that they do the genetic blood testing. We went in, we got our blood draw, you checked on the baby, baby was fine, um, baby was doing really good. And about five days after the appointment, we get a call from the doctor's office. And he said, you had come in for your genetic testing. He said, we have your results back. Would you like to know them now? And I said, well, yeah, I'd like to know them now. And he said, okay. He said, for spina bifida, your baby tested negative. So you are completely fine. He said, however, for Down syndrome, you, your baby has a higher chance of having Down syndrome. He said, well, his words were, you had tested positive for Down syndrome. Now anyone who's had genetic testing done knows that it's not a negative or a positive result. It is a, um, a percentage. So it's like um, your baby has a 1 in 100 chance or a 2 in whatever chance of having Down syndrome based on the genetics that they had got from the blood. So when he said you tested positive for Down syndrome, my mind immediately went to my child has Down syndrome and I just started crying and he said listen he goes we can do a more in-depth blood draw that will focus on baby's DNA and um, give us a better picture of you know, where baby sits with Down syndrome. I have a blood disorder. Um, I have hereditary spherocytosis, which is um, my red blood cells are misshapen. And if you have questions about that, ask and I'll answer them. But it's just, it's a blood disorder. There was a possibility that my blood disorder could have given a um, false 
positive on this genetic testing. So we opted to do the more in-depth genetic testing where it focuses on baby's DNA. I said, absolutely. So I hung up the phone with him and I had 30 minutes to get down to the office, which is 30 minutes away. Um, so I called Daniel and I said, I'm bawling. I said, Daniel, we tested positive for Down syndrome. He's like, I'm on my way. So he met me at the doctor's office and, um, you know, you're thinking to yourself, okay, if our baby's got Down syndrome, it's got Down syndrome. I'm not going to love it any less. This is still our child. This is just how God wanted our child to be. So regardless if our baby had Down syndrome or not, we would have went through with the pregnancy. So we went down and we did the larger blood draw. I want to say it was called the Harmony blood draw. And then we waited. At this point, I think we were close to 16 weeks when our results came back. The doctor had called and said, baby tested negative for Down syndrome. He said, your baby is, is as healthy as we can tell on the genetic DNA test. He said, but we are going to do an ultrasound later that will give us a better idea of whether or not it has Down syndrome. Uh, based on the femur length and then whether there was any um, fluid at the ba base of the spine where the neck is. Yet again, we were able to celebrate because our baby didn't have Down syndrome. At this point, Daniel and I really wanted some just focus on the baby good freaking news. We didn't have a 16-week appointment. Our, appo our next appointment wasn't until 20 weeks, which was going to be our anatomy scan. Daniel and I decided that we wanted to know the gender as soon as possible, mainly because we just, we wanted, we wanted something um, that was a positive, a really big positive. You know, knowing whether it's a girl or a boy, either way is a positive, but we just, we wanted to know, we wanted our hearts filled with knowing, um, so we decided it would be fun and exciting for the family, for Daniel, I, and the two boys to do a gender ultrasound at a place outside of our doctor's office. Um, we had to pay cash out of pocket, I think it was $85, um, but you got a gender ultrasound, which was a 3D ultrasound. They gave you the gender. They gave you a bunch of photos. So we went at 16 weeks to this place. It was absolutely beautiful. Like I, I walked in there and I was feeling good. And what I'm going to do at this point is I am going to, I'm going to put in here the gender reveal. 